FT losses for European stock markets this morning with the UK's FTSE 100 index currently down about 1.5% uh, testing that 6,300 level um, off from the 6,400 level that we reached yesterday, um, a level, an intraday level we haven't seen since January 2008, uh, and the Euro Stocks 50 index is doing something very similar, down about 1.6%, uh, while the DAX index in Germany is down about 1.8%. Uh, in the currency space, the Euro is also getting a bit of a beating. It's below that 132 level against the dollar, trading around about 131.92. Uh, while in the peripheral bond markets, both Spanish and Italian bond yields are creeping higher as uh, renewed risk aversion is kicking uh, those bond yields um, up a little bit uh, amid political tensions in uh, the Eurozone, particularly the upcoming election in, Green, uh, in Italy. Sorry. Good morning, I'm Ishak Siddiqui and welcome to your daily dosage of uh, market information. I'm going to give you a quick idea of what's going on in uh, stock markets today. Uh, so overnight in uh, the US, while after our European close, we had the Fed meeting minutes, uh, the Federal Reserve um, commenting on uh, the uh, most recent policy meeting where they held on to uh, ultra low rates and um, continued their QE program uh, in, in, their meet, in their meeting minutes this time uh, suggested that they are looking to vary the pace of QE so almost scaling back uh, the amount of QE that they're looking to pump into the US economy. Um, the main concern for the Fed is that an expanding balance sheet um, would inflate asset prices um, and surely could not be a good thing for the central bank as we'll be dealing with uh, a, a much larger stretched uh, balance sheet so at some point they need to start scaling back um, the amount of liquidity that they're pumping now for markets especially equities um, that is a bit of a risk given the fact that we're so addicted to liquidity um, especially over the last two to three years, um, it's almost a given that central banks step in, uh, intervene with, with uh, stimulus measures and at this point right now investors just do not feel uh, that the US economy or the global economy um, can uh, uh, actually lift itself up without the help of a central bank and, and start recovering uh, without these policy measures that are intact and, and that act as backstops and safeguards for uh, the, a, a global economic recovery. So that. Um, kicked in, uh, in, in in U.S. markets overnight. Uh, it sent the uh, S&P and the Dow lower uh, for both indices. It was the worst day of the year. That followed from the strongest day of the year uh, in, in, in the session before, uh, pretty much uh, wiping away all the gains made on uh, in Tuesday's session. Uh, so going into European trade this morning, investors here felt the heat of the uh, Fed minutes and start selling off. Um, now, closer to home in Europe, we've had Eurozone composite PMIs, um, not a good number at all. Uh, they fell um, much more than expected. Um, and the interesting point in this one was the we expectations were for uh, some strength in the German uh, composite PMIs. However, that wasn't the case. Germany uh, missed forecast. Worryingly, France also missed uh, forecast. They haven't provided a breakdown uh, uh, on, on a country level. Uh, but at the same time, investors are seeing the uh, Eurozone P PMIs as a, as a sign that the, the Eurozone economic recovery is still far uh, from sight and that the uh, Eurozone is going to be struggling for the first quarter of the year and it seems like we're going to uh, continue to re uh, remain in contraction zone uh, for the first quarter's GDP figures from the Eurozone. Um, that's hit the DAX considerably as the German number was pretty weak. Uh, Bunds. Uh, the, the German uh, core government um, uh, bonds are currently trading high on the back of that risk aversion where you're seeing a flight to safety uh, where investors are parking their cash into more safe havens such as um, bonds and taking out of risky assets such as currencies and equities. The euro is tanking on the back of that. So on the whole, pretty negative tone here in Europe. And at the same time, we have these Italian elections coming up and that's causing a bit of worry given the fact that there's no kind of clear sign as to who is, is really gaining in the polls right now. It's pretty evenly balanced. You hear reports of Berlusconi gaining some influence and then uh, have contrasting reports that uh, Pier Luigi Bassani, the opposing leader, the more technocratic, uh, reform-friendly uh, politician in, in Italy is starting to gain more uh, traction in the polls. So the fact that we haven't got any clear winner at this moment isn't a good sign um, and that's keeping investors on their toes and pushing those bond yields higher. Uh, in terms of what we're looking forward to today, we have um, a wealth of US data which should offer some direction. 
Um, we have the Philly Fed Index um, and a US existing home sales report and at the same time we also have leading indicators and of course the weekly non-farm, uh, weekly jobless claims uh, number for, from the US labor market. All three will be um, eagerly awaited um, and uh, investors may use uh, the data as a catalyst um, to, to go forward and find some direction. Um, other than that, not, mu not much else is going on uh, and um, the, tomorrow will be an interesting day. It's Friday, more German data, the IFO survey and at the same time we also have German GDP figures. So a lot of focus back on the Eurozone and I'll talk to you more about it tomorrow. Thanks for watching Daily, Mar Daily Market Byte and tune in for uh, another one tomorrow.